so let's start here. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in multiple dimensions. Part 14, Three Birds Continued. Uh, in today's episode, we tested our 3D mouse. We worked further with our tetratonic improvis composition, which you just heard the ending to with some running notes. We worked further with the animation to go with it, and uh, we worked further with some sound files. Um, so the 3D mouse is this thing, and uh, the way that that works is normally we run around our world. I'm using my arrow keys here and I'm using my mouse and kind of like that. Back and forth, back and forth. I can fly. Fly. Boink. And uh, it's very convenient to work with this, especially when you're building things like this steel chain we just demonstrated for one of our followers. The 3D mouse gives you a smoother effect. So uh, this is it. So if we lift up, we start flying. If we twist it to the right, we start going this way, that way. You see I have two hands here. If I push it forward, I can go backwards, backwards. If I pull back, it's like a joystick going up. If I push down, it's like that. Now, the real fun with this thing is just land and go what's called fly cam mode, which you now see at the bottom left, and I have to use my mouse to say, look down there, see the mouse, the fly cam. Now, instead of using the avatar, we just, our camera is free. And we can turn and look around. We also have to do another thing, which is turn off the interface. So this is for making movies. We want to have smooth, relatively smooth fly-throughs, and we practice doing this. So the 3D mouse, we're going up, down, forward, and halt backward, left, right. So we're all doing that using this. And it's very heavy. And you have to pull up and push down and push forward, push back, push left, push right. And that's the 3D mouse. So we work with that. And our idea with that is to do some, um, make some animations in a 3D world, which means we're going to have to build stuff in there, like this chain that we... Yeah. We have to get over there again. Get over there. Yeah. There we go. No, but we've shown you that before. So again, we're composing in multiple dimensions. So we spent quite a quite a fair amount of time doing that. We worked further with the tetratonic composition here in this score program, and we added what we call the ornament line here, which um, picks up right here. Du, 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 du. Du, 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 du. And, it, and it makes it definitely makes it feel more um, interesting so then we went to our animation as we wanted to put those together and this time we completely we redid it all over again but the cool thing was this time in, instead of having four corners we had a top and a bottom and a left and a right.
and that turned out to be the sweet spot because each of these is now being driven uh, by by a different part of the of the material this is the ornament is taking the top the uh, backbone and polyphone are left and right and the cadence is the uh, the bottom so we did that so we added the, this this and then we also did a little bit of experimenting with sound files um, but we're not going to talk about that just now because we have to work with that some more. Basically, we, we had shown you that we had taken, uh, we did this thing in the last stream, three, three image files, the same bird at three different times, and then we had um, recorded, gone back the next day and recorded the sound of the brook. And we're going to experiment with those left, middle, right, kind of like we did a couple streams ago. But that's down the road. That's down the road. So what we're going to do is play the uh, updated composition via its animation. And then that will take us home. So here we go. Turn this off. So what we like about that animation is it's, it seems a lot more subtle. It's, it's noticeable and it's subtle. Let's put that here. We like noticeable yet, yet subtle effects. So you don't want to blast our eyes with it. Um, Another thing, well, it's subtle because it's that faint cyan, and then there's white, and then if you pay attention, the the white repeats itself around the left, uh, right, and bottom. So, 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 so. Um, we've got more work to do here, and we've we've noticed that here. Upload a spatial animation to 3D. Uh, we mean a, an aural animation. In order to do that, we have to we have to send it up in 10 second bytes, and then have to write a script that puts the 10 second bytes together, because this piece is a minute uh, 40 seconds already. Uh, and then, like we said, maybe make a movie in the 3D platform where we're moving around and sound is going with it. Um, Shout out to Altman Rez, who interacted with us quite a bit and gave us a bunch of interesting new links to check out. The VCV Rack for modular synthesis. Um, 
Wave XR for music in VR. Uh, look forward to talking to you further. And as always, we appreciate all of your time and attention. Curiosity and interest, do tune in to our next episode, where we will continue composing in multiple dension dimensions. And as always, keep on streaming.